my students. So you all know that citrus is one of the most important fruit crops in the world. It contains several species and genus and it is one of the richest source of vitamin C. So most of the people, they can't pass the day without tasting the citrus fruit. So it's not an exaggeration, it is such an important fruit crop. This morning, we are going to learn something about the most important diseases that are causing alarming losses in the product, achieving higher production of this particular crop. So first we will see the most important diseases, the causative agents and later we will go one by one in detail. The Phytophthora gamosis, this is one of the most important diseases. It is caused by Phytophthora nicotiana variety parasitica and also Phytophthora palmivora. Second disease is Diplodia gamosis caused by Diplodia natalensis. Third one is dry root rot. It caused by several fungal complex that is Fusarium, Diplodia, so on and so forth. And the scab caused by Elsinofaceti, Ascomycetes fungi. And canker caused by Xanthomonas, Exenopodis, Pathover, Citri. You all know that Xanthomonas is yellow monotrichous bacteria. Tristigia virus, it is also known as quick decline because once the plant is affected, there will be a quick decline in its stature. So, caused by citrus tristigia virus. And another important viral disease is grinning. So, it is a Candidus liberibacter asiaticus, it is a bacterial disease. And of course, the fell disease caused by Cryptobacterium pseudopensilatum. So, we will learn one by one. First, we will take the Phytophthora gamosis incited by Phytophthora palmivora and other species. So, before going to learn anything about this particular crop, so this is first we will know the diagnostic symptoms. How to diagnose, how to identify this particular disease in the field. So, because the crop will be affected by several diseases at a time. So, first we will see the diagnostic factors or diagnostic characters or the distinctive characters or the symptoms of this particular disease. The first one is the water soaked appearance at the basal portion of the stem. So, you have to underline the importance of this basal region. So, unlike other another gamosis is also there that actually will come later. So, but this particular gamosis, the phytophthor gamosis, the characteristic feature is occurrence of the water soaked lesions at the basal portion of the stem. And second point is there will be a dark staining of the bark which progress into the wood. It is not only confined to the just outer rain, but also it go and penetrate inside the wood. So, finally, the bark will dry and it shrinks because of loss of moisture because of the infection and it cracks and finally, it shreds into vertical long, long, longitudinal pieces, strips. Bark at the base will be destroyed resulting in the girdling or death of the tree. So, these are the one of the, some of the few important points. In addition to this, the fungus also causes very profuse exudation of the gum from the trunk. So, you should remember that this actually the gum exudation of the gum actually occurs at the basal portion of the stem. So finally, the infection is not only confined to the stem, but also it go inside into the crown root system. So prior to the death, the plant generally the blossom very heavily, the flowers very heavily, there is a profuse flowering of the infected plants. On screen, you can see the infected, the basal portion of the stem and as uh, production of the gums, gummy substance. 
then we actually we are going to learn about what are the favorable factors, what are the predisposing factors or what are the conditions actually that predispose the pathogen to multiply. The first important point is the prolonged contact of the water near the trunk. When the water is come in contact close to the trunk because of the flood irrigation, there will be a, a chance of actually initiation of the particular disease. So, wherever there is a high water table, there is also chance, high instance. The disease is severe in high rainfall areas where the rain, number of rainy days are prolonged for quite long time. So, in addition to that, we also understand about the disease cycle. So, disease cycle will learn about how the pathogen actually it continues its life cycle in the host as well as the outside. The primary source of inoculum is the oospores or the dormant mycelium. So, those serves as the primary source for causation of the disease. Second one is the secondary source of spread. The secondary spread is generally it is through the rain splash. The gummy substance contains several conidia. So, the gummy substance along with the conidia it actually it spreads to the rain water or rain splash or irrigation water. These are the some of the important components we have to remember. Finally, for this crop for any crop the management is a very important aspect. So, without knowing the proper management just by seeing the symptoms and favorable conditions and understanding other disease cycle, it will not give any useful output. So, management is very important. So, how to manage this disease? I said whatever the favorable conditions actually that suits the pathogen that we have to avoid that kind of situations to the pathogen. The first one is we should avoid the injuries because the pathogen sometimes enters to the crown roots. So, we, there should not be a water stagnation near the base of the stem. So, in addition to that, we have to use the resistant sore orange rootstocks to manage the disease. So, always avoidance is the best policy. So, instead of actually going for the management practices, first once you select the resistant stocks or the sore orange rootstocks, so generally your 50 percent of the job is completed. So, in addition to that, so painting of the Bordeaux paste, Bordeaux paste with or with zinc sulfate or copper sulfate or lime at the ra at rate of 514 to the height of about 60 centimeters, really we can actually prevent the, the further spread of the disease. So, we have to prune out the infected portions and we have to apply this particular Bordeaux paste or zinc sulfate or copper sulfate or lime. In addition to that, we have to scrape the disease portions with a sharp knife, the gummy substance and we have to the cut surface should be pasted again with the Bordeaux paste or spraying with 0.3 percent fossil ale which reduces the further spread of the disease. In addition to that, there are several biocontrol methods are available. So, soil drenching with the 0.2 percent metaloxyl or sometimes the bioagents like trichodermobility at the 0.05 percent. So, the commercial formulations are also effective in management of the disease. So, so, we have to follow the all the package of practices, not only just growing the chem, spraying the chemicals, but also we have to use the resistant sources, we have to actually uh, avoid the water stagnation near the base of the trunk. So, these are the actually important parameters, so that take into consideration for the management of this particular disease.